Hello, I'm Yi Xin Huang from Pattern Recognition Lab, University of Erlang. Our paper is entitled Semi-Permeable Filters for Interior Region of Interest Dose Reduction in X-ray Microscopy. This is about osteoporosis research. Osteoporosis means porous bone. It is a progressive systematic skeletal disease characterized by low bone mass and microarchitectural deterioration of bone tissue with a consequent increase in bone fragility and susceptibility to fracture, according to the definition of WHO. In 2018, approximately 200 million people suffer from osteoporosis and 8.9 million fractures were caused by this disease. Therefore, Research on osteoporosis has great value. As we can see, bone is a very complex tissue which contains structures from macro scale in centimeters and millimeters down to the nano scale. Therefore, in order to study and investigate multi-scale bone tissue, different imaging techniques are required. For a review of such imaging techniques, please refer to the Nature Review article from our colleague. And here in our 4D nanoscope, we want to investigate osteoporosis development and its corresponding treatment. For this purpose, macroanalysis on bone tissue is necessary. In our work, we choose tibial bones from aging mouse models. Here for osteoporosis development, the number and the size of lacunae are very important characteristics. From our previous slide, we know that the lacuna size in most tibial bone can be up to one micrometers, which is very high resolution. With modern X-ray microscopy, it can achieve such high resolution. However, it has to acquire more than 2,000 projections and the acquisition time is up to several hours, for example, more than six hours. Therefore, the large amount of X-ray dose will damage bone marrow because the bone marrow is very sensitive to X-ray dose. Here we can see its weighting factor is 12 times about that for cortical bone tissue. Therefore, we want to protect the bone marrow from over X-ray exposure. So here, the region of interest is the exterior cone, uh, cortical bone, which contains this lacunae. And we want to reduce the X-ray dose for the interior bone. There are two methods. One is to apply opaque filters, which are also called collimators. For example, when the collimator is inserted here, then the X-rays in this region will be fully blocked. The second method is to apply semi-permeable filters. In this way, the X-rays can still partially transmit through the, the X-ray filter. So here in this work, we want to investigate the image quality and the dose reduction percentage with these two different filters. With an opaque filter, which means the transmission rate alpha equals zero, there is one problem that at different positions, there are different angular coverages. For example, for a point here, we denote the distance from this point to the isocenter by D. And here, this black circular area is the region affected by the opaque filter. We denote its diameter by L, then we can calculate the angular coverage of this point, which is theta equals pi minus two arc tangent L over D. It means that the closer the points are to the affected area, then the smaller theta is. For example, for this point, theta is about 80 degrees, which means 100 degree are missing. As we know that 180 degree is necessary for a complete reconstruction. 
However, for semi-permeable filters with transmission rate alpha equals uh, between zero and one, then we know that for different points, all of them have a full angular coverage. The only difference is that for the filter affected areas, because of a lower transmitted photon, uh, photon numbers, then there will be a higher level of point portal noise in this region. However, yeah, we can apply some denoising method to reduce this portal noise. So in, in order to compare the image quality of these two different filters, we use three different image reconstruction algorithms. The first one is conventional FDK. The second is an iterative reconstruction. We call it WTV for short. And the second method is to use penalized weighted list square to pre-process the projections. We call it PWLS for short. For further details of these two algorithms, please refer to these two papers. And here we simulate the uh, an XRM system with the following parameters. Here the source to isocenter distance is 10 millimeter and the source to detector distance is 25 millimeter. The detector size is 2000 by 2000 with a pixel size 2.0 micrometer and the reconstruction volume is 1024 by 1024 by 300 with a voxel size of 1.34. So these parameters are the same of a, a size system uh, with the type x radia 520. So here we also tried different initial photon numbers. And we found that with an initial photon number of 5 times 10 power 6 photons per detector pixel, then the reconstructed images are good enough to observe all the lacunae. For example, with different reconstruction algorithms, the, re the lacunae are all observed. In the FDK reconstruction, although the portal noise is observed, the lacunae are, can still be recognized. And in the WTV and the PWLS, the lacunae are reconstructed better. However, with an opaque filter, we can see strict artifacts because of the missing data. And also in some areas, they appear over bright or over dark. Especially the lacunae in the our eyes are not reconstructed, no matter which reconstruction algorithm is used. Instead, with a semi-permeable filter, we can see with a transmission rate of 25%, then here, the large lacunae are reconstructed. However, for the lacunae in the ROI, they are hardly visible, not to mention those in the ROIs with lower transmission rates. For WTV, the portal noise is very well reduced and the lacunae are very well observed in the ROIs when alpha is as small as 5%. However, when alpha is 1%, then the lacunae appear very blurry. And for PWLS, the postal noise is also reduced and the lacunae are very well observed. However, with alpha equals 1%, only, uh, the lacunae are only partially visible. Therefore, here we recommend alpha equals 5%. So in conclusion, with an opaque filter, most lacunae are not reconstructed because of missing data. With a semi-permeable filter, then FDK is not sufficient to reduce post noise when, uh, when the transmission rate is small. And for WTV, it can reduce post noise very well. However, it is computationally expensive because it is an iterative reconstruction. For PWLS, it can reconstruct the lacunae very well when alpha is as small as 5%. However, uh, what's more, it is relatively computationally efficient. Therefore, 
we recommend the PWLS with a 5% semi-permeable filter for our future in vivo experiments. Thank you very much.